Welcome to Franchise Focus. I'm your host, Lisa Linkowski. I am a certified franchise consultant representing hundreds of concepts in the franchise world. And Franchise Focus is all about putting a spotlight on these concepts. For my 25th episode, I am very pleased to have with me in studio, John Chung, who is the owner of multiple Five Guys Burgers and Fries, all in the South Jersey area. And welcome, John. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, John. And you know what's so funny is that you are my very first interview in the food category. Oh, nice. You know why? Because everyone thinks about food, but <laughs> franchising. That's so right. I kind of pushed it off a little bit just okay. to let people understand the audience that there's so much more to franchising there than is. just food. Yep. But we do know that food is one of the biggest categories out there and at my last uh, my last research showed that almost 200,000 quick service restaurants in the franchise space wow. as of 2020 okay. so you are just part of that enormous space so yes. welcome thank you for having me well thank you <laughs> so John you have an incredible background for how you got into the franchise space and I always like to explore that first and foremost sure. so walk us through what you were doing pre-franchise world so um, yeah a little bit of a windy path to get to uh, where I am today um, I after college worked for about a year or so in um, insurance actually I was an actuary for just about a year and then my dad kind of urged me to go into law school. Um, I always wanted to go into the classroom and be a teacher after college, but um, he was like, no, why don't you go to law school? So I did that, um, practiced for about six and a half, seven years, um, and always kind of didn't feel like a, the right fit. So um, after giving law a shot, I went to my dad again. I said, I think I really want to be a teacher. And so he was like, all right, I appreciate you sticking it out, giving law a shot, but um, you know, I'll support whatever you want to do. So became a uh, certified elementary education um, teacher and ended up teaching in the Haddonfield School District for about three years. Um, and that's when my dad brought up um, possibly joining him as a kind of a, co a partner um, with, with the Five Guys uh, franchise that he has in Burlington County. Um, and the nice thing about being a school teacher is that you have summer vacation. Um, I think there's a shot of my dad there. Um, uh, we have summer vacation, so I said, all right, well, why not give it a shot? I don't have to take a leave or anything like that. Um, and really from the first day, um, I loved that it was very dynamic, that there was always something going on, um, and I could utilize a lot of my background and, and bring that to bear um, kind of as a you know, budding business owner. So you went from insurance to law to elementary Education. school teacher yep. into franchise space. That's right. Yep. So <laughs> that is quite a trajectory of you know your career there. So right. the the Haddonfield Haddonfield School District yep. must have been very sad to have lost you <laughs> as a teacher, right? But here you are in this business world. It's totally mm -hmm. different than what you were doing before, mm -hmm. but you were able to build upon a lot of the things that you had learned leading up to this. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just from the elementary school piece, you have to be a people person. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people that are looking into franchise ownership is that you've <laughs> got to be a people person, especially yes. in the food space, right? right? Right. Really, really important. So how long your father um, was the original owner of mm -hmm. Five Guys. Yep. Walk us through that. When did yeah. he when did he start owning his very first one and then right. how did that expansion take place? Right, so he was um, interested in franchising. So around, I think it was around 2006 or so, he started applying to various different concepts. Um, I think all within food. Um, he actually didn't uh, know what Five Guys was. Um, I had it down in the DC area. Um, a friend of mine just was saying, hey, let's go check it out. It's a new, it's a new uh, burger place. It's kind of like in and out on the, on the West Coast, but um, it's very fresh and you know, it's, it's very good food. So I said, all right. So I went down and I learned that they were looking to start expanding and franchising. So I mentioned it to my dad, he applied. Um, and initially there was nothing in this area. I think it was nor upstate New York and Texas. And my dad, I think he was about 65 at the time, was not interested in kind of uprooting and, and going somewhere he's never been. Um, but he went on the interview anyway, and after uh, he met with the, the person from Five Guys, they were like, wait, um, did you say you're from New Jersey? And he said, yeah. Um, he said, something just opened up in Burlington County. Are you interested in that territory? And my dad was pretty much like, where do I sign? 
Um, so that was around 2007. He opened his first location in Morristown, about a stone's throw from here um, in 2008. Um, Cinnaminson is our second location, I think the following year. And then Marlton was 2011. And after that, um, things kind of slowed down a little bit. And um, I started, uh, I joined my dad in 2017. Um, and it wasn't until about December of 2020 is when we opened up our fourth location in Dalran. Um, and that is uh, our newest location and it's doing well, thankfully. All right, there's a lot that we've <laughs> got to go over with Sorry. all of that. No, that's fantastic. So what was your dad's experience? What was his mm -hmm. background prior yeah. to owning? Had he owned another business prior? Yep, yep. He always was uh, self-employed. He was always an entrepreneur. He owned um, pretty much a gift shop of some variety. Um, he had a store in the Cherry Hill Mall in the early 80s. Um, and then he uh, had a location in Penzalkin and then Maple Shade. So he was always in this area. Um, so the fact that something opened up um, in our, in this county was uh, just a miracle, really. Um, so yeah, he always was had his own business. Um, he only had one or two employees, so no, never like a large payroll or anything. So going to something like Five Guys was definitely a, a you know a bigger venture. Um, thankfully, he had good support people to help him out. Um, but um, yeah, so that's that's kind of his background. Okay, and if I heard you correctly, you mm -hmm. said that your fourth location, yes. you opened in December 2020. That's right. In the so <laughs> that, that right there, we're going to talk about right. that for a moment. What sure. was that like and how did you, yeah. and your, it's still open, so it was yep. able to survive everything that came right, right. around the corner from yes. it. So talk about that a bit. Yeah, we were uh, certainly impacted negatively, as everyone was in the food industry, um, March of 2020 when, you know, uh, the, COVID really hit our country, um, and in New Jersey there was various um, limited capacity to restaurants, and we were, um, it were obviously very concerned. Um, but right around the summer is when we started seeing a turn where I guess people were not traveling, people were at home, um, they couldn't go to maybe the fine dining that they were used to, and so all of a sudden we became, um, our sales started increasing year over year, and we were blown out of the water, and so um, we're like, you know what? Delran was always on the table. Let's move forward with it. Let's start construction, and um, so it took a it took a while, um, just with the permits and, and whatnot. But eventually, in twenty at the end of twenty twenty is when we re, uh, when we opened our location, and thankfully it was it was profitable from day one. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah. yeah, that I mean to sit there and open up, and it's been happening. Like right. that's one of the things that I tell my candidates is mm -hmm. that things are still turning businesses yep. are still being created Absolutely. right every single day it yeah. was very hard for us to see that in the midst of everything in the beginning right but you sat there looked at the fact that your sales were doing well mm -hmm. people were taking out yep. takeout yes more than ever right i know my family was right <laughs> so wanting to support also there was a whole piece of just wanting to support your local yes e you know eateries yep. for that matter mm -hmm. as well yep. so you sat there and made this decision you know what let's re let's open up this other this other yeah. business and yeah. you probably worked out some really good uh commercial real estate at that point, yeah, I'm hoping, and you got some so. good tenant improvements and yep, all that, because yep, yeah. you know the commercial real estate area has been hard hit. Yes. And so they were like, oh yeah, you wanna open <laughs> something in 2020? Right. Yes, we're yeah. right, right on it. Right. Fantastic, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the fact that you had mentioned about that your father had only ever had one or two employees, and now you have four you yep. know, locations. So yes. now what is your payroll at this time? How yeah. many employees do you have? Right. We have uh, around the ballpark of 80 employees. Um, so clearly a very different animal from my dad's small gift shop. Um, so, you know, finding good people is, is always a challenge and, and, and retention, training, developing, um, keeping them engaged. Um, you know, the great um, what is it, the people, um, resignation, you know, yeah. a lot of people leaving their jobs, looking for something else has certainly impacted us as well. But thankfully, um, we've been able to just kind of bob and weave and, um, you know, find ways to, to stay open um, throughout this time. So, yeah, we've been Well, and you've got multiple factors. You yep. have the great resignation. Right. Then you have inflation. Yes. Then you have yeah. supply chain issues. Right. Then you have the minimum wage in New yes. Jersey just one up as yes. of January, right? Yes. And it's going up every year, yep. you know, in succession. Yep. I know there was another really large um, 
chain that just announced you know increases to their cost because mm -hmm. of all of this yes and so you have so many things that yeah. so many factors yep yep a lot of headwinds um all the ones that you mentioned and yeah it's tough uh to be a small business owner in, in new jersey um it is what it is but um thankfully we've been able to weather the storm so far um so just hoping we can continue to do so Excellent. Yep. So with, do you offer, are you able with 80 employees, are you op able to offer any benefits? Like right now I'm mm -hmm. seeing a trend yes. where companies are starting to offer tuition, you know, assistance right. or they're offering, you know, um, some sort of uh, health benefits in some way, yep. you know, so what yes. types of things are you offering your employees? Yeah, so we, we are offering uh, things like uh, health insurance, um, medical, dental, uh, vision. We um, actually are in the midst of rolling out a 401k um, matching program. Um, what else do we have? Um, yeah, actually, we, it's funny because I have been meeting with you know different vendors and trying to uh, increase and in, uh, our benefits package for um, you know certainly for recruiting for retention, um, just with a long view in mind. Um, so yeah, there's uh, you know there's again additional costs, but I think it's it's an investment that's that's worth uh, making to retain the people that we have um, because they work hard for us right yeah. and you know people often will say well you know you're giving fifteen dollars an hour or twelve dollars an mm -hmm. hour to someone that is you know flipping burgers and then you have the person that's the assistant manager that now right. has to make more money right then you have the manager that's right. over them so exactly. it's this trickle effect yes. yep However, this is the backbone of your business. Yes. And so without these people, right. you don't have the business, exactly. right? Exactly. So yep. it's imperative to mm -hmm. sit there and help them to make them feel that this is something that is in the long run, what you just yeah. used. I like that wording, that mm -hmm. in the long run, this is something that's, that's beneficial for them and that's mm -hmm. why you want them to continue to stay. Yep. And you know, it's not just about the, you know, in the door, out the door, in right. the door, out the door. Right. Trying to keep those people because your quality and your consistency mm -hmm. stay when you've got a crew that, you know, they know exactly yes. what they're doing, yeah. right? And your element of surprise gets limited right. so much more then, yep. right? Absolutely. And yeah. so there's, there's all of this cost and benefits that you have to weigh right. as a business owner, right. you know, every day. <laughs> but are they appreciating that? Like, are you seeing that there is an appreciation for all the things that you're doing? Yeah, and the nice thing about being a small company, I'm, yeah, I'm in the stores every day. Um, you know, I have relationships with you know, certainly the, the general managers, assistant managers, and, and, and so forth. Um, so they are able to see, hey, he's trying to make changes. He understands that, you know, what we do day in and day out, and um, you know, we, we see the benefit of, you know, these added, um, I guess, benefits to uh, to our job, and that it's not just a um, just a job, but possibly a career. Um, and certainly in food, there's always going to be turnover, and right. uh, but to limit that, and there is a, a high cost of turnover. So investing in things that will retain people, um, it does pay off in the long run. Wonderful. Well, we're going to stop right there okay. and take a quick commercial break and hear a word from our sponsors. Our new home. Lots of windows, great light. But the birds. They're back. Yes, I hear them. Uh-oh. Why are these birds so angry? At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. I'm going. I'm going. Ah! Hurry, hurry. I know, I know, For I know. bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Welcome. I'm Barry Lefkowitz. I'm your host on New Perspectives on RVN TV. I come to you each week with issues and topics that you will generally find in the news. And if you're looking to be able to get caught up and know what's going on, then New Perspectives is the show for you on RVN TV. Look forward to having you. Your mom's got to go. Oh, she's family. Like daughter, like mother. Well, what is that supposed to mean? She's using my old spice moisturizer with shea butter for impossibly smooth skin, and she's wearing my robe. 
Hmm. It's bad enough you use up all my body washing now, her. <clears throat> We're out. <whistles> nice robe. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got good taste. <laughs> That's your mama. Welcome back to Franchise Focus. I'm your host, Lisa Linkowski, and my guest today is John Chung, who is the franchise owner of multiple Five Guys Burgers, and we're all going to be hungry after this interview. And, you know, we were talking right before the break, John, about what you're, you know, the, you touched upon the fact that you're an owner-operator, mm -hmm. but I do want to press upon the point that Five Guys is a behemoth. It's an empire in the franchise world. They started in 1986 yep. in Arlington, Virginia, and they have 1,700 locations worldwide with 1,500 more in development around the world. Yep. But bad news, people, they are sold out in the United <laughs> States and Canada. So there is no opportunity for, for Five Guys ownership at this time. But, you know, it's still great to hear about these types of concepts and how well that they do and how they just spread like wildfire. Yep. So let's come back to the fact that you are in the franchise space. There is owner operator, mm -hmm. there's semi passive, yes. and then there's completely passive where your hands off. Mm -hmm. So owner operator, you had mentioned to me, you're in your locations every day, yep. all of them. Yep. Talk about what your typical day looks like. Uh, there really is no typical day in food. Um, you know, you'll get a phone call and your day just kind of blows up. Um, you know, a fryer went down, so-and-so, you know, didn't show up or multiple people don't show up and then, you know, I'm on the line running a shift. Um, certainly with, with COVID, um, it, was, it was very real time, uh, things going on. Um, but in a typical day, um, I try to um, visit our, our, all our locations, check in, you know, hey, do you need any product? Are you, you know, are you good on um, staffing today? Um, and then from there, I try to, I, I pretty much have a mobile office. I bring my laptop, set up in the lobby and try to take care of my work and then being accessible to um, the managers. And we have a district manager who uh, helps oversee the locations um, as well. Um, and that's obviously, uh, he does, he carries the brunt of that, but um, it's always helpful to have a second set of eyes with anything. And so we team up a lot. Um, sometimes we go together, sometimes we kind of divide and conquer. But um, you know, I, I run payroll, um, I think that's every other week. Um, and just training, you know, anytime there's an opportunity for, hey, you know, for food safety, um, hey, make sure, you know, when you went down that table, we use this chemical, we use this rag. Um, and my dad was, was pretty um, adamant about me learning the business, not just as an owner. He, he said, I want you to start as a crew member, be trained, work on the, you know, work on the line, um, be on the schedule. And, and then I went down to Virginia where they have a more formal training. Um, where again, I spent I think probably 50, 60 hours on the line serving customers in a crew member T-shirt and just blending in and learning the process and learning the flow of operations, which is so valuable. I mean, how do I make decisions, you know, at my, you know, that impact these people that do this on a daily basis? I don't understand it. So, right. um, so I, I like being able to have that kind of versatility, you know. If, there's 20 people who just walk in the door. All right, you know what? I'm putting on an apron. I'm going out on the line. Um, so, yeah, to, to answer your question, um, the reason why, again, I like um, the food uh, industry is that every day is dynamic. Every day is different. Um, but you're also, you have to kind of know a lot about a lot of things. You know, if, hey, you know, a light went out, like, hey, maybe I need to learn how to, you know, Re replace a light fixture or something like that. So, um, and I enjoy working with my hands, so it kind of works out. And these are all important aspects when you're sitting there and looking at bus business ownership. And mm -hmm. your dad, by the way, yep. he gets to sit in the background now. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. And he gets to enjoy retirement. Right. And you know, and he's that passive, you know, in the background. Yep. How's everything going? Yep. Yep. Kind of person. And yep. after a long, rewarding career, right, right. a hardworking career, mm -hmm. this is how he gets to live out. Yeah. You know, at, you know, at this time, which is wonderful for yes. him. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Yep. So. 
franchising mm -hmm. all about a system you know you yep. talked about that you know you've got that specific chemical that has to be used mm -hmm. you have to have you know there's exact systems in place within yes. a franchise it's yep. not a you know wild wild west everyone does all. whatever that what they want to do mm -hmm. so talk about what is the system like in five guys and you know you just mentioned that they sent you down for more of a formal training mm -hmm. what is your system like and what's the collaboration like with the other owners yeah, so um, Five Guys has, has very um, clear standards um, and it's very, uh, there's a purpose behind everything that we do and a lot of it is efficiency. Um, and so they have certain standards that, you know, we need to follow even down to the color of a spatula on the grill. There's a red, there's a black and they serve different purposes. Um, when it comes to collaboration, you know, we, we certainly have neighboring franchise groups. Um, there isn't necessarily anything formal in place. Um, you get out what you put in and thankfully we have good relationships with those around us so you know every once in a while we'll pick up the phone and say hey you know this thing is rolling out how are you guys handling this um, you know New Jersey banned plastic straws from being in the lobbies like how are you what signs are you using how are you communicating this to your customers um, you know the plastic bag ban is coming up I think in May so you know, we, we talk about those things that impact us that might be, you know, only specific to New Jersey um, Five Guys locations. Right. Um, but yeah, thankfully we do have um, good relationships. Um, but again, nothing formal. It's really to the extent that you're willing to collaborate. Coming from education, it's all about collaboration. You work with your grade level partners. You, you, you're constantly um, trying to educate yourself and professional development is a big thing. And so um, I see the value, even, um, kind of internally, the value of our general managers and other managers from different stores working together, problem solving. Hey, how do you handle a Friday night rush? Um, we didn't get a great secret shopper score. What do you do? How do you, how do you adjust and pivot from, uh, from this? Um, so um, yeah, I'm a strong believer in communicating, collaboration. Um, you know, the, more, the stronger we are as a team, the better off we are. Yes, as someone, a franchise owner recently said, if you're not talking to another franchise owner once a week in her world, mm. she goes, you're doing something wrong. Mm. She said, because you can learn always. You're always yes, learning, right. you know, and people are coming up with some other situation yes. that maybe you haven't run into yet. Right. And then you get to learn from that and mm -hmm. then kind of avoid the mistakes and the pitfalls that they had yes. early on. Yep. So sitting there and having those discussions with other owners and teaming up with them so that you were you know, you're in business for yourself, but not right. by yourself, right? right? And that you do always have that ability, which is very helpful. Yes. And then having that cultivated in your own culture within your own locations, mm -hmm. so that, like you said, all the GMs are all talking yep. to each other and helping one another out. Yeah. That just makes everything so much more solid and right. helpful. Right? Exactly, right. I mean, we, we're all doing the same thing, and there's no need to be siloed. and you know, the benefit of, of sharing that knowledge, uh, again, it, it prevents a lot. It does. <laughs> so do you now look back at the fact that you had this, this whole career and you look back now and say, this is where you are happy that you're at at this point and you were, you know, at this phase? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I think, I forget when the movie came out, but sometimes I think of um, Slumdog Millionaire and okay. there's this, you know, he goes, Crazy things happen in his life, he can't explain it, and he ends up on a game show, I think it was Jeopardy or something, and then yep. eventually all the questions that are asked relate to times in his life, and he's like, okay, I guess that's why. And sometimes I feel that way, where it's like, okay, I understand why I was in law, you have to review a lease, you have to review an agreement with a vendor, and you know, um, what's the termination uh, penalty if we, if we have to back out of something. So, um, and then education is, as you said, there's so much, um, transferable skills that come from working with children and you know um, training and and patients working with talking with parents like those are sticky conversations sometimes so um, having a, a conversation with say a high school uh, crew member that we have um, and just being like hey you know I can let's have a conversation what's going on and and so I feel like that that teacher side comes you know comes out in me a little bit sometimes so um, but yeah, I, I mean, certainly there are days where you want to pull your hair out and there are days, you know, certainly in the last couple of months with um, just everyone getting sick and business uh, in December is, it's our busiest season um, right. where I just felt like one day was, was rolling over to the next. I didn't know, you know, there were no weekends and, um, you know, you start 
I'm saying is this worth it? But you know, now that that dust has settled, um, in the past five years, there are only a f very few moments where I was like, I maybe I, be sh maybe I should be doing something else. But um, so all that to say, it, and being able to help out my parents as well as goes goes a long way. Um, you know, when you're having a rough day, you're just like, hey, you know, I'm supporting. You know, my parents, my family, um, and it's something that, again, 99% of the time, I enjoy it. Are there other family members that are involved as well, or is it uh, just you? Yeah, no, not, not at this time. Um, okay. So, yep, just me. Um, but, um, yeah, thankfully, it's, it's, been, it's been working out. All right, yep. great. So one last question for you is, you know, all of this education that you've received mm -hmm. has been tremendous like MBA on steroids <laughs> times you know a thousand right what is there anything that you would have done differently is there any any big mistake that you made mm. coming into this that you could say to others that are looking to come into this you know <laughs> that you might be able to help out with um, one real practical thing is um, when I first came on I think that was the year um, one of our leases was expiring. I didn't look at the lease because I assumed that the person at the time who was kind of the director of operations was aware, or my dad, um, but basically we missed the renewal notice period. Um, and so our negotiated rate back in 2007 or eight um, went up quite a bit. And so they're like, sorry, you know, you kind of have to renegotiate it. So, you know, it ended up being, I forget how much more, it was in the tens of thousands of an increase over 10 years. Of course, it was spread out, but for me, that was a gut punch, and I was like, okay, I need to read all the leases, know when those renewal periods are. Um, uh, so that's kind of a real practical thing that I, um, looking back, I'm like, man, I wish, had I known, um, I would have done things differently. Um, but I think just the reminder that, um, you know, I, I'd love to say that I live out the mantra of people over profits, but um, you know certainly I lose sight of that sometimes. But I think when I, you know, in your your honest moments, you have to kind of remember, hey, the people that work for you go home to families. They work for a reason, and they're not just a, you know, a fungible commodity where you're like, all right, next in. Um, but if you treat them with respect and you have, you know, you're personable with them, they're gonna, you know, in turn. Um, want to stay and, and do the best that they can for you. And again, it, it just out of just care for people, um, I feel like that goes a long way. Um, and in turn, you know, profits do come because, as you said, there's um, that less turnover and there's that long standing relationship, and you have that known quantity of, all right, you know, this person's been with us for six months, a year, like I don't have to retrain and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I heard that once people over profits, and that always stuck with me. All right. What's your favorite shake, by the way? Do you have one? Um, I try to stay clear of shakes just because, <laughs> you know, it, it tends to stay on my body. But um, It stays with you. Yeah, it stays with me. So, but if I, if, if I knew health wasn't an issue and I was going to go out tomorrow, I would probably go with a chocolate malted milk milkshake. Okay. All right. Well, you heard it here. Ch chocolate malted <laughs> milk with five guys. And there are four locations in the Burlington County. So be sure to go visit one right away and get your uh, five guys fix. I'm Lisa Linkowski. I am the host of Franchise Focus. Thank you so much, John, for joining us. And you can learn more about me at milestonefranchising.com. This show airs every Friday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time.